All right, so I'm back and reunited with my uh, 1948 um, Martin Triple O 21. Uh, this is my favorite acoustic guitar. I shouldn't say that. It's like saying you have a favorite kid. Uh, I actually feel guilty saying that, but um, but I do. I just love this guitar. It sounds great. It plays great. It just feels right. And uh, anyway, this one has been in the shop. It's been uh, it had needed a lot of work. It had to have the frets redone. It had to have a neck reset and uh, a new bridge and just a lot of love in TLC. It's what happens with these older guitars, you know, they just, it's wood, it's organic, it expands and contracts through the years, and you've got all this string tension. And anyway, um, I wanted to mention the guy that uh, that worked on it, though. He's here in Nashville, his name is Spencer, and uh, I'm gonna put his uh, web address up. He was super helpful and very thorough in helping me understand what I needed to do to the guitar. So if you have a, a vintage guitar, or even a not vintage guitar, just a guitar that needs some repair or any kind of work done on it, uh, go to his website and go to his contact form and shoot him an email. He's great. I'm sure I'm sure he can take guitars in if you're not in the Nashville area. You can probably mail them to him. I'm, I'm sure he would work with you on that. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to plug him. I don't usually plug uh, products and, and services, but I try and plug people every now and then if I find a, somebody that's really good like that. Okay, so um, I was sitting around trying to figure out what I could play this week. Uh, with this guitar, I wanted to do something, and I was going to do some blues, and I, I do a lot of blues, and I thought, yeah, maybe I've done a lot of that lately. So I was just kind of noodling around, which I do all the time. I'm a professional noodler, but I was playing with this melody, and it just sort of fell out. Now, somebody out there is going to tell me that this is a melody from something else, and it may be. It sounds very familiar. It's super simple, and it could obviously be a part of lots of songs. But uh, if anybody knows what this melody is or what it sounds like, let me know, because it, I was racking my brain trying to think, well, because I, I, I try not to do anything that's somebody else's material for copyright reasons. So I like to think I write all of this stuff, but sometimes, you know, you, you take an idea that you've heard somewhere else. And... So anyway, if this is something obvious, let me know. Uh, even if it's not obvious, let me know if you know it's something else. Um, so we're going to break this down, and I want you to take out of this, uh, first of all, how to play it. It's a great little exercise and a fun composition that you can play on your own. Sounds good on acoustic or electric guitar. But I want you to understand how you might be able to write your own composition like this. It's really not that difficult to do because it's really all just based on some chords and a melody line that goes on top of those chords. The challenge is how do you put them together when you're doing a solo composition like this? How do you do that by yourself? And you have different techniques for that. You could go finger style and play kind of more like the way Chet Atkins would do it. But I wanted to do something uh, with a pick because I know there's a lot of you that are pick players out there. And then if you are a finger style player, you can do this finger style. So you can pick however you want to do it. Choose however you want to do it. So I've got this little composition lesson split into two parts. In this video, we're going to go through the first half. If you'd like to learn the second half and also access the tablature for this, you can get those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and search for EP406. Okay, so it's in played in the key of C, but the first chord is an F, so it actually starts on the four chord. So we'll go through the chords real quick. Then it goes to the five chord, which is a G. And then it goes back to the C. There's your one, there's your resolve. Then the two, the minor two. And back to the four, back to the five, and back to the one. So that's the chord format. So the melody line goes like this. And that's what you're playing over the four chord. 
And then it goes to the five chord and you play. So it just walks it back to the one chord. All right, let's look at how I played this. Um, so I started with my index finger on the first fret, second string, but I'm playing strings two and one at the same time. I'm letting that open E string ring out because that E note is in the C chord. So it sounds like that. It sounds a little weird if you just hear it uh, out of context, but I thought it worked kind of as a composition. And then you play the open second string or the B note. And then we're going to come into the four, where the four chord starts. I've got my middle finger for this. It's on the second fret, third string. And the reason I'm using my middle finger for that is because right after I hit the melody note, I'm going to go right into the F chord. And just pick the notes out of the chord. And so you can see what I'm doing there. I'm playing the F chord like this, just the top four strings of it, barring the first two strings on the first fret, second fret, third string, third fret, fourth string. Let's look at this from the beginning then. So we have. And that's how I played it. And then watch this. We can just slide that up at two frets and we're at the G chord. And then I'm gonna play. So let's look at this. So while we're playing that G chord, and again, I've always kind of come back to this and, and mentioned this point, but when I play a bar, instead of playing a full bar chord, don't do that. You're just wasting valuable um, finger space. You've only got so many fingers. And if you play a chord like this, as opposed to all six strings, you've got room to let your other fingers uh, play melody lines like we're doing here. You couldn't do that if you were using all your fingers to play the full chord. So, look at that triad there, the top part of the of that G bar chord, and start on the third string. Ring finger goes down on the fifth fret, third string, second string, behind the bar on the third fret there. And let those notes ring out. I think that sounds better than very robotic. You, it, it sounds more chimey. In fact, I even strum, you know, the top part of the chord. Then we come down to the second fret, third string, and then watch this. So I hit with my pinky. Now some of you are going to use your ring finger for this, but it's the fifth fret, fourth string. I'm using that, playing that note, knowing that we're to the one chord now, which is our C. So after I hit that, I put my index finger down on the third fret, fifth string. And I play the C chord like that. That's the C chord using the A shape. So you have. All right. So from the beginning, and actually I started with just strumming a C chord just to set the, the key, I guess, the key center, tonal center, as they say. Now this is where it goes to the A minor, and I went, so I walked it down. So I was thinking, you know, you've got your C note here, we're going to go down to a B, and then down to your open A. So we have, and when I play this, it's just the second fret, fifth string, and then fourth string open, third string open. And that allows me, while that, those are ringing out open strings, I can reposition my hand into that A minor chord. All right, let's take it from the G. All right, now once we're at the A minor, we're gonna go back to the uh, to the F. But from the A minor, this is super easy because you can hold down the A minor shape and use your pinky to play the, that melody. So it's the open, or I'm sorry, it's the second string. It's not open because it's behind this first fret here in the A minor chord. Pinky goes down on the third fret, second string, open first string. And then we come back to the third fret, second string, and I held it a little bit, I went. And then, so that's a pull off. That's the first fret. We play it, pull it off, come back to the second fret, third string, and then I can go 
play the full F chord. So make sure when you play that second fret, third string, that you're playing it with your middle finger so that your other fingers can fall into place to play the F chord. All right, so let's back it up from the beginning. Play our C chord. And then we go back to the G, play it once and just strum the chord and then play a little fill lick. That's so much fun. Let's look at that fill lick. So after I strum that G chord, then I played. So let's look at that lick. So we're starting by barring the first two strings on the third fret here. I'm doing a hammer on to the fifth fret second string. And then I'm going to put my middle finger down on the 4th fret 2nd string and do a pull off. Now I'm keeping that bar the whole time on the 3rd fret of those first two strings. So it goes like this. And that's just, think of this as a lick off of your G chord. If you're ever playing a G chord, if you're ever playing this chord shape, I should say, you've got this lick here. Uh, okay, then we come down to the 5th fret 3rd string with the ring finger. And then down to the, uh, the, and I'm just playing the G triad here. That's the fourth fret, third string. You can see that's the, the three, uh, the third interval out of that chord. So it's, and then, so it's string two, back to string three. And then we land on the C note here, which is the fifth fret, third string. And then I hit the low octave of it. And really, I was trying to play that C chord like this using the A shape, but I couldn't. I could only hit those two notes in the way that the timing worked out. So I did it like that. All right, so after that, then I came up and went a nice little country kind of feel like. So what I'm doing. I'm sliding with my ring finger up to the 7th fret, 4th string. I'm making the F chord up here, but I'm using the C shape out of caged. And this is the sweet spot when you make this chord, is playing strings 4, 3, and 2, because it's easy to do. You're going to bar, in this case, bar the first 4 strings on the 5th fret. Middle finger goes down the 6th fret, 2nd string, ring finger on the 7th fret, 4th string, and you play 4, 3, 2. That's your F chord, it's your F triad. So if you ever want to play an F in another position, this is a great way to do it. And you can, you can let go of those fingers and go back to your one chord. So there's your C, there's your F. They're right there connected to each other. So the timing for the way that I played that, I just slid into that fourth string, played four, three, two, and then we're going to go. So from here, we're going to go uh, fifth fret, second string, seventh fret, third string, fifth fret third string so it's that's a great little lick and these notes are just part of your C major scale it's always important to know your major scale in all the positions and connect that major scale to your chord shapes that's why I was easily able to find this was because I know where all my major uh, scales are connected to chord shapes. I'm going to put a lesson number up on the screen. You can check that out if you'd like to know more about how to do that, how to play the major scale in all five positions on the neck. So we're sliding in. Uh, play that. And then we're going to come all the way back down to this low C using this kind of country lick here. So I'm going to bar the first uh, four strings on the fifth fret, play strings four and three. We're going to hammer on to the 7th fret 4th string, just playing those two middle strings, and then a quick slide from the 7th fret 5th string down to the 5th fret, all the way down to the 3rd fret. Now this is just a lick that lives off of this chord shape in my mind. When I see this A chord shape out of caged, I know that if I come up here to this side of it, I've got all these fill licks that work in this case, it would be between the 5th fret and the 7th fret. But that kind of country sounding double stop thing 
It's just a lick that lives off of this chord shape in my mind. So everything that I'm playing in this to create this composition is all just a series of licks and little ideas and things that I've picked up, you know, through the years. And I'm trying to pass all of those on to you, or as many as I can, so that you can take them and then at least discover them and see how they work and maybe make changes to them. You know, you're going to add your own flavor to them. But once you have this index of licks and connected to just basic chord shapes, you're able to create melodies like this fairly easily. Even on the fly, you can improvise something like this. So, this final lick. That's a great lick. I mean, if you get nothing else out of this, you've got this really cool lick that lives off of this chord shape. So if you were playing a D chord, for example, there was a song with a D chord in it, you could go... Right? It's just a matter of noodling around and kind of, you know, getting under the hood, so to speak, and analyzing these chord shapes and then and then the scales that connect to them. Uh, let me back up and play through this first half one more time and then we'll see you in part two for the second half. And if you're not a premium member, look into it. It's very affordable. I always like to plug that at the end of these videos because, you know, I've got years and years worth of lessons like this in depth. All kinds of different styles too. Okay, from the beginning. Okay. 